Okay, hey everybody, it's Joe, and I am here with the 3D Mist printer, and we are uh, talking about 3D printing. We're talking about, what are we talking about today? Uh, it's 3D printing, and uh, I came up to Utah. That's right, you came, you're, you're actually down in Vegas, so it wasn't too bad a trip for you. Thank you for coming up. What'd you think of the place? Uh, it's absolutely gorgeous, and this uh, maker space is even cooler. Yes, this is my day job. This is this is where I get to work out of most of the time, and I'm I'm super, I'm super excited that I get to be a part of this. The library systems down here are dedicated to the idea of, of bringing making to the community, and and so yeah, I have the coolest job ever. Yeah, some of the coolest printers too. You got the uh, over here. You got the uh, Ultimaker. Yep, and uh, and we've got uh, a couple of Monoprice voxels slash flash forge adventure threes when we first started we've got a couple of the monoprice minis that are right here there you go and those those were great printers when they started out um and then we've got one large format rays n2 plus over here which can print a small child i mean it's really impressive and i think that with any maker space because you have a lot of people coming in, the only way to make 3D printing faster is to add more 3D printers. And so having these affordable, cheap 3D printers has really, uh, it's, it's improved our output and it's allowed us to service more people. But at the same time, it's taught people that these are $400 3D printers, you know? And a lot of people come here and they use the 3D printers and then they go, wait a second, I could buy this in my house, right? So yeah, that's it's been fantastic. That's a... Uh... I would love to have this in my garage. <laughs> no, me too. Uh, well, I've got several 3D printers in my garage, but yeah, no, this is this is absolutely wonderful. I don't get to use these as much as I would like to because I've got to make them available to the people who come in here. So thank goodness I'm the 3D printing professor, right? But I understand you, you've been into 3D printing. I want to talk a little bit about you. I've seen you around online. I've seen you in a couple of live streams and asking questions of people. Who are you? Where'd you come from? Uh, I am a, just a disembodied head. I just kind of float here from time to time and talk a lot of smack, ask really dumb questions on uh, community showcases. <laughs> but you've also asked some very intelligent questions about 3D printing that shows that you do 3D printing. Uh, actually, I don't myself. I have my stunt human do it. Oh. There we go. So what sort of 3D printing does your stunt human do? Uh, it does uh, all kinds of different things. Uh, uh, Halo helmets, uh, 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 Halloween. Uh, I did had him do a, a, a Edward Scissorhands set of hands for Halloween. Oh, that's cool. Now, what do you what do you really want him to three D print for you? What could he print if you know if we could print anything? Uh, a robot suit, so I could rule the world. I'm kind of grateful the technology's not there yet. Then. <laughs> No, but that's fantastic. Uh, now, what 3D printer does your does your stunt human use? Uh, right now, an Ender 3 Plus, or sorry, uh, Pro. Creality makes some great machines. That is a great machine to start out with. Highly, highly recommended. So, but a little bit small. Not not as small as the uh, the voxels here, but 200 by 200 by 200 thereabouts, right? I think it's like 250. There's 250 in there, but it, it is very small. Yeah, it's and uh, because of the uh, warped uh, printer bed for the pros, uh, you don't even get to use all of it. So you have to be real careful as how much of it you use. I didn't even know that was a problem. That is, ugh, that's that's less good. Yeah, not. It's a great printer. Now that I have a, a, a mesh bed leveling on Marlin, uh, much better, much better. I don't have to worry about. It. I have to do all the crazy, uh, uh, you know, getting everything just perfect so the center and the sides are the same and actually work it's kind of annoying <laughs> well and, and printing accuracy uh there, it's it's kind of surprising how often what we 3d print doesn't need to be accurate but when you want it to be accurate uh it kind of takes a little bit of effort to get it up to that point so i understand your frustrations uh i recently i, I was i'm in the middle of my printer brick a printer block Kickstarter right now, and I was printing some of them, and I thought, you know what, this printer is having a hard time leveling the bed. I'm just going to print on a raft, and sure enough, I don't know if you've ever printed on a raft, 
the bottom just wouldn't come off. Those holes were all closed up. It was so <laughs> frustrating, you know. Never used a raft. Oh, well, avoid it if you can. Get that bed nice and level so you never have to deal with it. I've never had a chance to use mesh leveling, though. How's that? Does that work good for you? Uh, it's pretty pretty amazing. Uh, uh, once you, uh, I think it's uh, nine spots or six spots that it picks up. It's like three across, three across. Some, uh, and they can do more. I think there's a setting in there where you can crank it up or down. I, I did crank it up to like 25, and it still did the same amount. So I don't know if my Marlin version was broken or not, but it is the exact same ones. So the problem with open source source the problem with open source software, I knew I could say it if I tried hard enough, is that it always gets to this point where, like, ah, we know that's a bug, we'll get around to fixing it eventually, and it never does get fixed, you know? But it still works, so who's to complain about stuff, you know? I do love open source software, though. It's got us to where we are today, you know? Yeah, definitely. Let's see, what else, what else are we gonna talk about? What do, you think of, what do you think of the area? What do you think of this southern Utah down here? Oh, it's absolutely gorgeous place. Uh, the I'm gonna have a bunch of photos and everything. I'm gonna post. Uh, people don't realize how beautiful desert can be. You know, it, and this area of the desert in particular, the rocks are so cut. Like we don't have water, we don't have green, but we got the prettiest rocks you ever seen out here. You know. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, on the way into town, there's a, a huge cliff that just is bright red. The, the over... red cliffs, yeah. And in fact, there's some dinosaur tracks out there if you go looking for them. Ooh. It's pretty cool. <laughs> it's pretty cool. So with your uh, printer blocks, that's uh, kind of why I wanted to uh, come here for. Yeah. Uh, I see you just uh, went past another uh, uh, goal. We, we hit another stretch goal, and that was that was super exciting. So uh, a, a big, big thanks to everybody who's backing that Kickstarter. And I believe you're in that Kickstarter, aren't you? As of last night. So you guys are going to get, at this point, I think we're at 55 3D print models that, of course, you can print more than 55 of them. You can reprint the ones that connect together and make just thousands and, and thousands. And I feel I feel terribly embarrassed. I knew you were coming today, but I forgot to bring any of my printer blocks. I took them home because last night is when I started breaking all of them and decided I needed to redesign them. So I took them home so I could reprint those ones and then bring them in today. And I've got six kids. They tend to disrupt your thoughts as you're leaving the room, the house in the morning. And I didn't. I I I'm so sorry. I didn't bring any. I, I hope you'll forgive me. But I'll send you a couple of the 3D print files so you can try them out or have your stunt human try them out and tell me what you guys think about them. Uh, definitely. I'm gonna try out some uh, new uh, gray uh, PTG I got from Ziltec. So cool. I'm looking forward to seeing your prints from that and seeing what you build with that. I do. I did want to ask you another question about maker spaces in your area. Um, you don't live very far from here. It's just a couple hours drive, and yet, have you been able to find any maker spaces in your area? No, I I looked online for quite a quite a bit, and uh, I found some that I think were uh, maker spaces in the past, but they are no longer maker spaces. They don't seem to be active anymore. I can't find anything about them. It's like they just disappeared. Yeah, that is that is hard. But maybe what you should do is talk to your local libraries and you guys as well and see if you know, tell them, hey, show them this video. Say, check out this cool makerspace. It's in a library and uh, I will be happy to help them get set up and get going on that one. I always want to see more 3D printers in the hands of people like you and everybody. So I'm excited for that. Now, hold on just one second. Jill is probably going to want me to pause this print. Looks like we got a little failure going on, and, uh, oh, yeah, that's no good. Well, I'm going to kill this and start it over. <laughs> we'll let that go so it doesn't interrupt the interview anymore. Yeah, live, live recording. This is always exciting. All right, so how long have we been talking? Do we have time to talk more about printer block or anything like that? Oh, uh, yeah, if you'd like to. Are you sure? Or we could go to the second video. I think we're going to have to go to this. I think we're out of time on this video. I'm sorry. We were hoping to get to printer block on this one. But I, I, I enjoyed talking with you so much that I'll tell you what, guys. So the 3D Miss Printer, he's going to make a second video on his channel. And we'll talk all about printer block on that channel. So <laughs> thank you guys very much for watching on this channel. Go over to 3D 
Miss Printer's channel and let's talk there more.